Joe, Sean, welcome. Welcome to Deals of the Week. Happy to be here. Sean, tell us a little bit about 73 Kent Avenue. Where is this? All right, so first of all, this is on the corner of North 9th and Kent Avenue facing the water in Williamsburg. And I have to credit my partner, Mike Subatico. He's been saying for quite a while now that it's beginning to look a lot like Soho and North Williamsburg. Uh, if you go and visit on the weekends, North 6th Street has been completely changed. There's high-end boutiques. There's lines out the door at you know companies you'd normally see in the meatpacking district and in Soho. And so this is basically an opportunity to follow up on that uh, momentum and redevelop a two-story, 25,000 square foot plus uh, rooftop property overlooking the waterfront facing uh, the East River. Uh, so the current zoning is M12. Uh, we have a substantial amount of retail comps in the setup that uh, justify about $120 of square foot that you get on the ground floor rents. We're projecting $80 of square foot for the second floor office slash retail use. And then there's an ancillary income potential here from the rooftop. Uh, which can be amenitized and substantial billboard opportunities. So if you go to this area, and I can put you on the, the phone with Colossal or Scene, uh, but part of the revenue of this these uh, industrial M12 zoning properties in this area is the signage and the, the billboard revenue. Uh, so you add all this together, we think you can get about a $2.5 million NOI. Most of that will be translated to the net as this would qualify for an ICAP tax abatement. This rendering shows you just a hypothetical of what we think somebody could bring this to. Uh, but again, on the, the rough numbers, uh, using rents that are justified and that are backed up by recent comps which are in the setup, we think you can get to a $2.5 million gross, probably low $2 million net income. It's probably worth 45 to 50 when it's done. We're asking 25, it'll cost seven to get there. It's probably 10, 10 to $12 million spread uh, available to you not taking into effect uh, factor of what is going to happen with this area as it continues to develop. So one of a kind, the buyer pool is somebody that has experience in retail or has tenants that are primarily already in the best locations in Manhattan that want the Brooklyn exposure. Um, and again, hard to, you know, hard to argue with the location. This is one of the last mom and pop estate uh, type sellers on the waterfront on Kent Avenue in Brooklyn. Um, you know, this is for what, what are they using it for now? It's uh, it's vacant. It's got high ceilings. There's a video walkthrough in our due diligence room. Property's in very good condition, but it used to be the largest typewriting facility in the United States. Uh, so it's been vacant oh. quite a while, but it's it's, you know, full power, electric, uh, mostly column free. If you scroll down, there's probably some pictures in the setup. Uh, but if you have a tenant in mind for this, you have the edge. Um, it's not zoned residential. Right across the street is zoned residential. There is definitely a possibility if you go for rezoning here and give the city some affordable, uh, you can get there. Uh, but it's priced uh, as if it's M12 zoning, which is what the as of right is right now. Very, very cool. Super exciting piece of real estate. Hard to go wrong in the, the long term. I think a pretty clear cut winner, winner even in the short term. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Joe. I guess Let's speaking see. of Soho, there's, this is the real Soho. Oh, this is exactly. Sullivan, right south of Houston, between Houston and Prince. Uh, we sold the corner across the street in the middle of COVID for uh, for a, a four and a half cap. And now we're asking this at a five cap uh, for $14.5 million, a 40 footer. It's part of a larger portfolio, but it can be bought individually. Uh, this is probably one of the better price deals that we've seen a while in this type of location. Um, you still have some room in the uh, retail rents, um, you know, small bakery that I think is paying a little under market and then some of the residential rents. Uh, mm -hmm. While the, you know, rents have definitely softened a little bit, we're not seeing that in this location. So you're still getting uh, a, a good rents for one, two bedrooms. And a lot of these units do have outdoor space, which I think is unique for this area. Um, and it's just a phenomenal location of where you wanna be. Um, in the heart of Soho. Yeah, nice. can we talk about rents for a second? Because sure. it's hard to imagine that rents are going to go down. I know people bring this up, but we have a number of macroeconomic factors here. We have no new supply of any types of converted buildings. We have no 421A tax abatement, which is basically the only way in pretty much any area outside of Manhattan, like the most prime that you can build rental. So two, three years from now, there's going to be a gap of at least a year, year and a half between any new competing product coming on the market. And 
free market tendencies just generally have held up throughout even COVID. I mean, people left, but then they came back and they paid even more and they've, you know, paid rent ever since. The people that stayed continue to pay rent. So it's, you know, we can talk a lot about, um, there's a lot of good assets with broken balance sheets that are available right now that are just selling because of debt resizing needs. Uh, but the fundamentals of the income and expense statement, I believe are gonna hold up throughout this time period. Yeah, there's yeah. way more demand than there is supply, especially in this neighborhood for this type of, you know, uh, property. So, you know, the rents are going to continue to rise. Uh, in my in my opinion, we're seeing it firsthand in this specific asset. Yeah, well, with debt at six and a half or seven percent. Hey, it's not that it's, high yet right now, Seth. That's, that's no, I, no, no, no. Hold on. To buy for a for a purchase for your primary residence. Um, if it makes more sense to rent, right? You rather renew for another sure. year or two um, than than go buy, go get a thirty year loan at six and a half percent. Correct. That's Seth, the driver that's going to keep rent size. There's yeah. no Seth, one. Gonna... Are you home with COVID right now? But signed two contracts today. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this is in Marble Hill. It's also actually starting to look a little bit like Soho now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this picture is amazing. This, 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 this picture is amazing. <laughs> this is a 93 unit apartment building up in Marble Hill, which is for those of you who don't know, it's it's uh, technically Manhattan, but physically in the Bronx. This is a we put this under contract for a family. This is the only building they owned, and it was just sort of the end of the life cycle here. And you know, second and third generation took over. Uh, two thirds of the units in this building are free market, and the average rent on those free market apartments is about fourteen hundred dollars. And the other two thirds of the building, you can see here, almost everyone has a preferential rent. So if the only thing that a buyer did was renew the free market apartments with Section Eight rents, you can build this to north of a seven cap, and then you have the other sixty apartments on preferential rents. So you can see some of the photos here. Uh, most of the apartments were had lead removed from their units. So this was pretty much the cleanest building I've toured in the last couple of years. And that was one of the things that made it so attractive to the buyer. There's no lead, there's free market apartments, there's preferential rents, there's no elevator to deal with, there's no local law eleven to deal with. So you didn't really have anything to do. The, the lobbies were small. So there's no like excess cap CapEx, where you have to like go in there and start spending money without a return. So here you can see a picture of the lobby. It's pretty vanilla, which it used to be. You didn't really want that. But nowadays, after the rent laws, less is more uh, for this. Type what's of the thing. cap rate going in at the you know, approximate? So this was approximately uh, five and a quarter, five and a half. Five and a quarter in the Bronx with rates yeah. at what? Rates at 6%. Rates basically at 6%, you know. But there's Probably. a pathway. I mean, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that anything you can get to a seven cap plus on costs, you're going to make money on. Yeah. And look at your basis, you know, buying it for less than 140 a unit. You know, the taxes are fully phased in. There's actually a tax reduction that the seller got prior to the buyer signing the contract. So the taxes actually get lowered, at least for the next 12 months until you fight them again. But um, look, you can go raise the NOI by about a hundred grand, you know, pretty easily. Wait, what city. else did you sign today? Uh, the other one that we signed, thanks for asking Joe, 390 Wadsworth Avenue is now under contract. This is a uh, fully rent stabilized building, uh, no preferential rents. This is in the Soho section of Inwood. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> this, uh, sorry, this COVID thing is getting me a little loopy. Uh, this, this was signed, uh, almost, this was signed north of a 6% cap rate. There's a 17 year tax abatement left on the building. So the taxes, they would be 85,000. They're going to be stuck or in the mid forties for the next, uh, 17 years and then phase in over that. So the buyer was able to come in and get a really, really well-maintained elevator building with humongous apartments. Like you've got. 42 units spread out over 50,000 square feet. So these are big, big apartments here. And I think ultimately the buyer is going to do very well. Let me see. And the trade. reason the seller sold today? Um, 
their equity partners didn't want to stay in the deal. Their debt was coming due. They purchased it a handful of years ago. And for them, they it was easier and, and better and to just to get out and move on to the next investment. So this is one of these, this is kind of the opposite of two Adrian Avenue in that it's fully stabilized. It's, you know, the apartments are big, they're all rent stabilized. You have a big, beautiful lobby. Uh, you're up here in Inwood. And the buyer bought this because at this price per unit, it was a, it was a good return and it was a really well-maintained apartment building. So two contracts signed, deals are getting done. Yeah, deals are getting done. Sometimes the cap rates beneath the prevailing interest rates. And I think that, you know, buyers in the marketplace need to know and sellers need to know that there is the right types of deals that will trade at the low five cap still. Uh, majority of the commodities will will trade in the sixes, but the right stuff can still sell in the fives. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good, guys. See you next time. Take care. Okay.